All right. Well, hello, everyone. I hope that you are having a wonderful day. It is a Friday, September 20th, about 3.14 in the afternoon, Central Time. And again, I hope that you're doing well. I want to get on here and just encourage you from God's Word and pray together. Um, and uh, those will hop on. I know most will watch this later. Uh, but uh, if you have a prayer request, you can put it in the comment section or a testimony. You, you don't have to go into great detail, but just put the sum of it, and I'll see it. Others will see it, and we'll pray for you. I'm going to pray for you as well at the end of this video. Uh, we're going to pray for Israel. We're going to pray for this country. And um, But there's something I really want to emphasize in this video as it concerns end-time events that we are living in right now. We're living in the last days. And if you didn't know that, um, well, I'm letting you know right now, we're living in the last days. What does that mean, we're living in the last days? Well, it means that Jesus could come back at any moment. And in John chapter 14, uh, Jesus encouraged his disciples. He said, don't, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. And he said to them, and again, this is John chapter 14, the beginning of that chapter, he said, I go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again that where I am, you may be also. Jesus in John chapter 14 was predicting the, his coming and the rapture of the church is what we refer to it, or Paul referred to it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, as the catching away of, of the church, of those who are in Christ, a sudden catching away. And, uh, and so, but I want to I wanna focus on 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and where Paul talked about the day of the Lord coming as a thief in the night. You know, um, I'm, I'm just going to read it. Uh, it says, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. I want to notice that. Concerning the, the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Now, again, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm for a reason, Paul, when he wrote those words to the Thessalonians, which 1 Thessalonians was one of, if not the first epistle that the Apostle Paul wrote. Personally, I don't believe it was. I believe Galatians was, but I could be wrong, and it's, a, it's, a, it's not a, a non-essential. But the point is, one of the first letters that he wrote was 1 Thessalonians. And he's writing to these believers in Thessalonica, and he is reminding them of what he had taught them when he was among them. That's why he said concerning the times and the seasons, and he's talking about end time events as we'll read on to read into it. The day of the coming, the coming day of the Lord, the coming wrath of God on this earth, uh, the catching away, okay, our gathering together with Him, all of those things he's dealing with. And he says to them, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. I'm stopping here because I want to emphasize this point that for, and I'm not trying to be pessimistic or the cup is half empty, but it's just reality that there are so many believers and so many people in this world, I'm talking about unsaved people as well, who have a knowledge of God's word, okay? They have the knowledge of the gospel. They've heard it. They've maybe been in church. They, they've heard about the coming of Jesus, but they're, they're not saved. But I'll, I'm talking about those who are saved as well. They're truly born again. They're in Christ. They're truly redeemed. But there are some, if not many, in both those camps who have who have deliberately chosen to ignore the soon return of Jesus Christ they've deliberately chosen again to ignore the soon return of Jesus Christ as if it may happen it may not it doesn't really concern me what really concerns me is my next paycheck or i'm not going to read into what they would think but 
the, the coming of Jesus is not on their mind, and they deliberately choose to lay it on the shelf. But the Apostle Paul, when he wrote to the church in Thessalonica, which is for us as well, he let them know and he reminded them that they knew exactly uh, what Paul taught about end time events. They now, when I say exactly, that doesn't mean that they knew exactly the timing of the coming of Jesus. Nobody knows that. But he said to them, "You concerning the times and the seasons, brother, you you have no need that I write to you. You you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. In other words, the day of the Lord is coming." And that day of the Lord includes the rapture of the church. And, and I want to emphasize this too, that, that statement, the day of the Lord in the New Testament and even Old Testament, uh, it's really, really was used in the Old Testament. It's carried over into the New Testament. There's so many different views on the day, what the day of the Lord includes or is. Some limit the day of the Lord to the 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 one 24 hour period in which Christ comes back again called the second coming of Christ at the very end of the seven year tribulation period that's in Revelation chapter 19 some limit the day of the Lord to that and personally I believe that that's wrong because biblically and I'm just going to summarize this for the sake of time but biblically when we take it what the day of the Lord is Again, the day of the Lord. Paul said, you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord comes as a thief in the night. What does that mean? That means that there's an aspect of the day of the Lord, which, which, again, biblically, the day of the Lord is not referring to one single 24-hour period. It's referring to an extended but yet limited period of time. In other words, there's a time in which the day of the Lord will begin, and there's a time in which the day of the Lord will end. And, and so, but it's not, again, a, a 24-hour period. It's an extended but yet limited period of time. And for my own study of Scripture, and I'm just going to present it that way because, again, there's a lot of different perspectives and views on the day of the Lord, and my point is not to argue about that uh, and, and because even though it's very, very important, the coming of Jesus and knowing the seasons and all that, even though that's important, it's still a non-essential as it concerns salvation. In other words, People, believers can disagree about the coming uh, of um, believers can disagree about the timing of the coming of the Lord, and it's completely fine. It's not a, it's 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 not a essential as it concerns salvation or even, uh, in some ways, our sanctification. Now, believing that He's coming again is essential. I want to emphasize that it is essential. But it's the timing of it is a non-essential. And so we can, people can argue and get contentious and call each other heretics because of, you know, one is a pre-trib, one's a mid-trib, post-trib, one's a no-trib, um, uh, and, and all that. Personally, I believe in a pre-tribulation coming of Jesus in which he's going to snatch his church, the body of Christ, out of this earth. Why? It's because... Uh, because following that, that coming of Jesus will be the revealing of the Antichrist at some point. And in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, Paul explained that when the Antichrist is revealed, uh, or I'm going to say, that, let me back up a little bit, that before the Antichrist is revealed, the restrainer, will be taken out of the way. And then when the restrainer is taken out of the way, then the lawless one will be revealed. The lawless one is the Antichrist. And so get that. That's 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. When the restrainer is taken out of the way, then the lawless one will be revealed. The restrainer is you and I, the church, the body of Christ. And I should say, really, it's not us physically or personally in the, 
as much as it is the light and the life of Jesus, the salt of Jesus being manifested in our, in our life and the influence of the Holy Spirit in our life and its, and its effect on this earth. We are a restrainer. But Paul said there's coming a day in which the restrainer is going to be taken out of the way. That's, that refers to a sudden, be, sudden taking out of the way. That's the rapture. Then the Antichrist will be revealed. And that will begin when, when the Antichrist signs his covenant with Israel for seven years. That will begin the seven-year tribulation period, what, what we refer to it as. And it will be what the book of Revelation chapter 6, verses 16 and 17 refers to as the great day of the wrath of the Lamb. And again, the word day is used, but it's not referring to a 24-hour period. It's referring to an extended but yet limited period of time. And that will be the seven-year tribulation period in which it's called the day of the wrath of the Lamb and of God. And it will be a time during those seven years, and this will take place again, after the church is taken out, it will be a special time. And I use the word special in a negative way because it's not going to be good in this earth. But it will be a time of God's wrath being poured out on this earth. And I think it's, it's important that as a minister of the gospel to let people know, and maybe those that are watching this right now, maybe you don't know Jesus, or maybe you're, right on, you're, walking the, you're, you're, you're riding the fence, and maybe you just don't know if you're right with God. Maybe those who watch this and at some point in the future, and, and, and you don't know Jesus, and and who knows what's going to happen after the rapture, after the restrainer is taken out of the way. We have no idea, but Paul did give us insight, again, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, that when the restrainer is taken out of the way, that there is going to be a flood of, of unrighteousness, of lawlessness on this earth, of deception, of the working of Satan on this earth like the world has never known before. And it will be a time of God's wrath being poured out in this earth. There's going to be a massive bloodshed. This is all in the book of Revelation. Again, for the sake of time, I'm not going through it. I have a series on the book of Revelation, okay? You can look at the playlist in the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. Press the playlist. You'll see teaching on Revelation. I do a, a whole teaching going through all the book of Revelation. And you can go to Revelation chapter 6 and, and uh, see all that. And so... Um, and so I encourage you to do that if you haven't done that. And subscribe to our Corner Ministries YouTube channel. My point is this, is that, is that if you don't know Jesus, uh, the things that you've seen in this earth are only scratching the surface to how bad it's going to be. And some mock that. Some make fun of that. I'm talking about even believers. And I mentioned to that earlier that they... Some will even mock the, the rapture of the church. And I have to be careful because I, I, I've come across believers who have mocked the rapture of the church, and they're not mocking the coming of Jesus necessarily, but they view the pre-trib rapture as wrong. And I think that they're terribly wrong for even having a mocking attitude about a pre-trib rapture. Um, and so... There are those who and make fun of you know different views, but they still believe that Jesus is coming again, and that in itself doesn't make them a quote scoffer, the way that Peter used that term. No scoffers are those who reject the coming of Jesus altogether, and they make fun of it, and they make fun of you and I as believers who believe that Jesus Christ is coming again. That is a true biblical scoffer, one who scoffs at the coming of Jesus. And so when Paul wrote this in, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, he says, For you yourselves know perfectly that the day the Lord so comes as a thief, as a thief in the night. So the day the Lord, I, I believe, begins with the rapture of the church. And it includes, the day the Lord includes a lot of different events. It includes the, it, the, the rapture of the church. Uh, it includes the revealing of the Antichrist to sign a covenant with Israel for seven years. 
It includes him breaking that covenant in the middle of the seven-year tribulation period. The day of the Lord includes the second coming of Jesus Christ. At the very end, the physical return of Jesus described in Revelation chapter 1 and then Revelation chapter 19, uh, in which he will return riding on a white horse, and you and I will be riding, uh, following him riding on white horses. And, and some, again, think, well, that's just metaphorical or mytholo mythological. No, no, no. It's reality that Christ is coming again. So the day of the Lord includes that aspect of the, the sun coming of Jesus Christ in which the whole world will see him. The whole world's not going to see the rapture. It's going to happen in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, and we're going to be gone. But the second coming of Christ at the end of the tribulation period, the whole world will see Jesus. So the day of the Lord includes that. The day of the Lord includes uh, the judgment of the nations. When Christ at his second coming he will gather the nations, and those who uh, were following the Antichrist will be the goat nations, and those who did not will be the sheep nations. They will accept Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. And I'm getting into more detail than I expected, but um, you can share this video if you want to. It's about end, it's, it's about end time events, but uh, press the thumbs up button too. and love this on Facebook. Um, the, 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 when he comes back again, the sun coming, a lot of people don't realize this, but it's going to be the greatest one-time harvest of souls this world's ever seen. When he judges the nations and the goat nations are cast out and the sheep nations are, are brought in, that's those nations that did not get the mark of the beast and they didn't necessarily accept Jesus either during the seven-year tribulation period. But when he comes again, they will surrender their lives to him, most of them. And in, uh, in Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 10 and 11, the Lord through Zechariah said that, he said, but many nations or many nations shall be joined to the Lord in that day when the deliverer comes out of Zion. That's the second coming of Jesus. At the, again, at the very end of the tribulation period. And, he's, and he said, many nations, plural. That's not Jews. That's Gentile nations. Whole nations are going to come and surrender their lives to Jesus. And Jesus is going to reign on this earth for a thousand years. And the Bible describes that time period as a time period in which righteousness will reign and the knowledge of the Lord will cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. It's going to be exact opposite of the way it is right now. It's a, it's a part of the hope that you and I have as believers in Jesus, that there's coming a day that we will have a resurrected body. All the effects of the fall are going to be gone and are in us. And there's coming a day in which Christ is going to reign in this earth physically and the Bible says in Revelation 20 that you and I are going to rule and reign with him. And there will be physical people on this earth that don't have a resurrected body. They have a natural body. And the way the Bible describes it in, uh, I believe it's Isaiah chapter 66 or 65, that, that the human life during that time period is going to be extended and people will live for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And it describes it, again, in that, in that passage in, in Isaiah, let the last part of Isaiah, that, that if a person dies being 100 years old, it will be as if an infant is dying now. In other words, during that thousand-year reign of Christ, if someone dies um, at being 100 years old, and the reason why they die, it's said in Isaiah, is because They've cursed God, and God's cursed them. In other words, they've rejected Jesus Christ just blatantly and have, and have, have manifested that rebellion. Their life will be cut short. But get this, it will be cut short at 100 years old. So God is going to extend people's natural lifespans. And again, that's not for you and I. We'll be in our resurrected body. But people in their natural bodies, they will live for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And, uh, and so the day of the Lord includes all of that, the thousand-year reign of Jesus. And I could go on with that, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 2, again, he refers to the day of the Lord as coming as a thief in the night. 
A thief in the night is, is one in, in which it, it's, it's, his coming is unexpected. And that's what Paul said about the coming or the day of the Lord. It will come as a thief in the night on this earth. People will not be expecting it. Now, you and I, as the, as the church, as the body of Christ, Paul would say this, and I get this. It said in verse 3, For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. And so the world will be in an attitude of peace and safety. At least that's what, that's what they will be saying. Peace and safety, peace and safety, peace and safety. Now, that is all in the midst of them, of, of this earth being in a chaotic place. That's in Matthew chapter 24, verses 4 through 8. Jesus talked about the signs that will, uh, will be a precursor to the day of the Lord or the coming of Jesus, the rapture of the church. That they, those, those events of, of, of deception and, and natural disasters and, and um, uh, diseases and all that and earthquakes. And uh, again, deception is the main, is the main uh, sign. He said those signs are like, are, like the, are like birth pains. He said those are the beginning of sorrows. They're not, it's not the, the day of the Lord yet. They're the, that's just the beginning of sorrows. And, and that term, beginning of sorrows, it, it really means that it's the, like the pains of a woman in birth. That the closer she gets to giving birth, those contraction pains get more intense. And that's what we're seeing in the world today. And so Paul said, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains. Again, that's the same as Jesus brought out. As labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness, so that this day should overtake you as a thief. Why am I coming on here and saying this? Because Jesus could come back at any moment. And you and I, as God's people, need to be ready. You and I need to be alert spiritually, have our hearts right with God, be looking to the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, this is not to put fear on anybody, and Paul would bring that out. He would later on say in verse 11 of that first, uh, fifth chapter of 1 Thessalonians, he said, therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. So the coming of Jesus, these words that I'm bringing you today, from God's word, are a word of comfort for us. Not for us to fear, but to be comforted, to be strengthened. Because that day, the rapture will not take us off guard. And, and, and I believe very strongly that if a person's heart is fixed on Jesus and they know he's coming again, that it doesn't matter what time the rapture takes place. It doesn't matter. Now, it's important, but it doesn't matter when the timing of it is. It's because they're living with an attitude, with a heart in which their eyes are looking up, looking for the coming of Jesus. And they're not living a life in which, in which they're just living for the here and now. So he said, but, this, but, but you, brethren, are not in darkness, so this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. It lets us know that even believers can take a sleeping attitude as it concerns the, the coming of Jesus. And But he said, therefore, let us not sleep as others do. That's that. That, again, that's taking a sleeping attitude as it concerns the coming of Jesus. Uh, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love and as a helmet of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you get that? It's so, so important. God did not appoint us to wrath. Paul is comforting the believers in Thessalonica, letting them know 
that when the day of the Lord comes, we're going up with him. He's coming for us initially, as far as the clouds. And he would explain that in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that he will appear with a shout, the voice of an archangel, the, voice, the, the sound of a trumpet, and then the dead in Christ will rise first, and then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the Lord and will meet the Lord in the air, and thus we shall always be the Lord. And he said, comfort one another with these words. And so, and so Paul is comforting them, and that's what I'm doing today, that the coming of Jesus is soon. And, and after the coming of Jesus, the Antichrist is coming to the scene, and it's going to be a time of God's wrath on this earth like the world's never seen it before. And again, we, we think we've seen it bad in the last several years since 2020 or even the events leading up to 2020, and it has been bad. But you know what? Uh, and I'm not trying to belittle it. It has been bad. There have been many people who have died for various different reasons, COVID or all, all different things. People have gone through very difficult times in the last about five years, very difficult times. But God has not appointed us as his redeemed to wrath. And so that wrath is the coming day of wrath that will be poured out on this earth. And we don't have a special appointment with that. Now, trouble in this earth, yes. Jesus said it. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer, for I've overcome the world. And in that statement, he said, he said, in this world, you will have tribulation. He didn't say, in this world, you're going through the tribulation. He said, in this world, you're going to have trouble. You're going to have difficulty. He said, the rain falls on the just and the unjust. But he said, but have a winning attitude because you're not a victim of your trouble. You're a victor over your trouble through the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. And then Paul is really saying and really emphasizing somewhat that same thing in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, that the day the Lord is coming as a thief in the night, but you and I are not of the, of, of the night. We're of the day. And so let's be sober. Let's keep, I mean, spiritually let's, and physically, let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's live ready and, and, and tell people about Jesus Christ. And, you know, there was, um, there, and I'm going to, well, I'm going to finish this. He said, for God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another, just as also you are doing. So what was Paul's response? He said, all of this about end time events, what's the bottom line conclusion? Comfort one another with it not beat each other over the head with it. And I'm, my intention with this, I hope that's not coming across that way, but don't beat each other up with the coming of the Lord. Don't condemn other believers, okay, th about the coming of the Lord, but stir them up, stir them up. And this video is here. Hopefully it will stir some up that he's coming soon. And, and you and I are to live ready. We're, we're children of the day, Paul said, not of the night. As, the, as though that or as that day would overtake us as a thief in the night. No, no, no. No. We're people of the day. And so I want to leave it there. So um, I went longer than expected. But I want to pray. And uh, I hope that you have been helped. I'm, I want to. I see. Uh, I, I, okay. I. If you have a prayer request, and also we'd love to see where you're watching from, type that in, and uh, so, amen. I want to pray, and I'm just going to pray for the needs uh, that you might have today. And as I say often, uh, this is not meant to be an observation thing. This is meant to be a participation thing. Let's pray together. No matter when you're watching this, if you're watching this tomorrow or a week from now uh, or a year from now, if the Lord tarries, and you can, it, the awesome thing about video like this is that the, the anointing, the presence of God is still real. It's still there. And, and so I'm going to pray for physical healing for those who need it, spiritual healing, mental healing, and restoration, and healing in every way possible. And we're going to pray for this country. We pray for Israel as well. So let's pray. Father, we come before you right now. 
in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I lift up everyone right now that has a physical need in their body. Lord, they need your healing hand to touch them. And I ask you, Lord, just like the apostles prayed in Acts chapter 4, that you would reach down your hand from heaven, Jesus, and touch those who need your healing. For healing is not from us. We're not the healer. You are, Jesus, and we're just your vessels. And Lord, right now, in your name, Jesus, we take authority over every power of the enemy, every spirit of affliction, every affliction of the body, every disease. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus. We take authority over liver disease, over skin disease, over kidney disease, over tumors in the brain or tumor, cancerous tumors in the body. We take authority over it right now in the name of Jesus, and we command those afflictions and tumors to dry up and to go in the name of Jesus. Lord, right now we take authority over every uh, even infirmity of the skeletal body, the bone structure. Lord, we ask and believe you, Lord, for healing in the body, Lord, healing in the brain of nerve damage, oh God, and, and, and from vertigo, healing in other areas of the nervous system. God, we ask you, Lord, for healing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on, receive it right now. Believe it. Lord, we look to you. You are our healer, and we take authority over every power of the enemy and every affliction in the name of Jesus, and we believe and we receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, right now I lift up those who need just an, a healing touch in the mind. They've been hurt, they've been offended, or just bruised from life. And I ask you, Lord, that you would bring healing. As you said, Jesus, you came to bring liberty to those who are bruised. And I pray that you would bring freedom to the bruised, O oh Lord, bruised in the mind, bruised in their spirit because of life events or because of other things, self-inflicted wounds. I pray, God, that you would bring healing in the mind right now in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, let there be strength right now in the mind. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. I want to pray for our country. And I want to pray, I'm sorry, I want to pray for the prodigal children and families. And we all have family members that need to be saved. So I want to pray. Father, we come before you right now in Jesus' name. And we lift up our families. And Lord, we ask you for a harvest of souls in our family. Lord, you know those within our family that need to give their lives to you. They've heard. And Lord, we ask that, they, that, that you would take the words that have been spoken to them and you would speak to their heart. Because, Lord, we've spoken and we've spoken and we've spoken, but it takes your voice that makes the difference. And we ask you, Lord, that you would speak to them, deal with them and as only you can. And, Lord, let their heart be convicted and let, let them know that they're a sinner in need of you, Jesus, and that you love them. God, we pray for a harvest of souls in our family and our co-workers, oh God, at work, and those that we've sold the gospel to. Let that word come back to their remembrance, and let them be saved in the name of Jesus. I'm going to pray for our country. Father, right now we lift up our country, the United States of America. We thank you for this country. And Lord, we thank you that you have protected uh, former President Trump from two assassinations, we thank you for that. But, Lord, our hope is in you. We look to you. And, Lord, we lift up our leaders in government as your word commands us. And, Lord, we ask you to give them wisdom. We pray more than anything that you, Jesus, that you would be revealed to them and they would know that, Jesus, that you, that, that you are their Savior, that they're a sinner in need of you, Jesus, to save you. We pray for a harvest of souls, even in high government positions. We pray for the Holy Spirit to move in Congress and Senate, Lord, in a federal level and even a local level, a state level, Lord. Let the power of your Holy Spirit move in the mighty name of Jesus. And let there be a harvest of souls. And Lord, we pray for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit in this country and countries around the world. And, Lord, raise up laborers in the harvest fields. Use us, Lord, as obedient and bold laborers in the harvest field. Lord, let us not be ashamed, but, Lord, let us be bold in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we lift up Israel right now. We pray for Israel's protection and her victory in this present conflict. We pray that you would bless Israel, protect Israel from every enemy 
Hamas, Iran, Hezbollah, and every proxy. We pray that, Lord, you would confuse them and bring to nothing their plans. Let the hostages go free. And we pray for peace in Israel. And, Lord, we pray that, God, you'd bring an end to this present conflict in the name of Jesus. And we pray for a harvest of souls among Israel right now before the rapture, Lord, a harvest of souls in Israel that you, Lord, would move by the power of your Holy Spirit right within Israel, Lord, move. And, Lord, man says it can't be done, but, God, with you all things are possible. And we ask you, Lord, for a mighty move of your Holy Spirit in this country, in every country around the world, and in Israel, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. I want to pray for the finances I end. And uh, some people sometimes think finances, well, that's a physical thing. A second, actually, it's a very spiritual thing because it takes money to pay the bills. And so, and God wants us to be blessed. It doesn't mean he wants everyone to be a multimillionaire. It doesn't mean that. But he wants us to be blessed, to be, be able to pay our bills and to be able to sow into God's work and be a blessing to others and for us to be wise with what he's given to us. And so let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. And I pray, God, for your financial blessing for your people, that you would bless your people financially in so many different ways, Lord. And, Lord, uh, that when they give, as they give to you, that, Lord, you would bless them in a way like they've never known before, that, Lord, the dollar that they have would be stretched, and, Lord, it would you would just multiply it, Lord, like you multiplied the fish and the bread. Multiply what we have in our hand, what you have given into our hands. And, Lord, bless your people in that way financially and bless your work. Help us, O oh God, to be generous in our life and our giving. For, Lord, you've, you're a generous Savior, and I, we believe you for that financial blessing. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm going to end there today, but I pray that you've been encouraged. It went longer than I expected. Um, if, if you haven't subscribed to the Cornell Ministries YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe, and, um, and there's teachings on there. I encourage you to go on there. Look on the Press the Playlist. And you can see all kind of teaching, teaching the book of Revelation, teaching on Romans, teaching on the book of James, teaching on the Holy Spirit. I've almost finished with the life of Christ. Um, in the future, I'll be doing other teachings, but uh, that's all on there. Also, I want to say this, that if you have followed us on, the, on our Corner Ministries YouTube channel, if you're looking for the church services, they are all in the, in the tab, the, the live tab. So press the word live. This is on the... Cornell Ministries YouTube channel, and you'll see the church services because we're recording our services or streaming them live now from the church. And so that goes on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously at the same time. So they are in the live section on our Cornell Ministries YouTube channel. So I'm going to leave it there. So God bless you and have a wonderful day in Jesus.